So it's a great time, uh, students. Uh, we meet this uh, time again for this uh, topic of earnings per share under the advanced financial reporting and analysis. So when we talk about uh, earnings per share, uh, under the International Accounting Standards 33, to be more specific, you have to be aware of how to do basic earnings per share. And at the same time, you need to be aware on how to do the diluted earnings per share. So when I will be doing a 20 marks question on this topic, so this, uh, this uh, a 20 marks question will be containing some major things. So which are these major uh, things you need to understand how they are dealt with when, when you are dealing with shares. So when you have an aspect of rights issue, when you have the aspect of bonus issue, when you have the aspect of share split and reverse split. So this is just a general introduction we are doing. So a 20 marks question will contain that items I have mentioned, but you cannot find all of them in one question. Maybe you can, you will find bonus issue and maybe share split, or you find bonus issue and reverse split, or you find rights issue and share split. So, but now before we go to that route, uh, let's do a general introduction. on How are you supposed to compute for basic EPS? Then later we'll have to talk about the diluted earnings per share. So these are the relevant notes I will use for this uh, topic. So we always say that uh, the earnings per share, earnings per share, is the profit attributable to ordinary shareholders for every ordinary shares held in the company. So the profit, which is attributable to who? To the ordinary shareholders for every ordinary shares held in the company. Today you are a shareholder in Safaricom, you are a shareholder in any company. You need to earn something in return from the shares you own. So how does the company compute for that? So International Accounting Standards 33 requires an enterprise to calculate and present two types of EPS. So we have the basic EPS, and we have to talk about the diluted EPS. So to start with uh, basic EPS, what is basic EPS? It's all, it's all about, it's calculated by dividing the profit uh, or loss for the period by the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding during the period. So under this topic of uh, international accounting standards 33, so that is earnings per share, earnings per, per share. So under this earnings per share, we'll be talking about basic earnings per share. So the basic EPS, and I will be talking about the diluted EPS, diluted EPA. EPS. So to start with the basic EPS. So I will be saying the basic EPS is all about the powers of our annuals. So the profit attributable to ordinary shareholders, you divide with the weighted average number of ordinary shares. The profit attributable to ordinary shareholders, to be more specific, ordinary shareholders. You divide eh, with the weighted average number of ordinary shares. So you need to know how to get this, and you need to know how to get this. So when we talk about basic, that is a profit attributable to ordinary shareholders, we talk about the reported profit for the year. Reported profit for the year. We start with the reported profit for the for the year. So after talking about the reported profit for the year, we have to deduct the preference dividends, and at the same time, we deduct the profit attributable to the minority shareholders. So here we say less dividends to preference shareholders, dividends to preference shareholders, dividends to preference shareholders. dividends to preference shareholders. Then again, we raise what? The profit attributable 
profit attributable to NCI. So NCI, I mean the non-controlling interest. This is the minority shareholders in a company. Let's say when I will be talking about group accounting, you will find that uh, you will be told a parent acquired a subsidiary, let's say up to 80%. Of which I understand you know what your subsidiary is. You did financial reporting, intermediate level. So when the parent acquires another company for a percentage exceeding 51%, 51 to 100, that is, let's say the percentage rise between 51 to 100, let's say 80%. A acquired B, 80%. So meaning that this is a subsidiary to A. So the percentage which is unacquired here, the 20%, this is attributable to the minority shareholders. This is what we call NCI. So the profit attributable to those are minority shareholders. So you minus. So, and that is how you get the profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. The profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. The profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. So then when you talk about now the one knows the weighted average number of ordinary shares, eh? the one knows weighted average, the weighted average number of ordinary shares. So from the word itself, weighted average number of ordinary shares. What are we supposed to do? You weigh the number of ordinary shares as per the time factor. So this is what you are supposed to do. When you are talking about uh, the one knows, the one knows means this. So we have talked about the house. So for the one who's weighted average number of ordinary shares represents outstanding number of ordinary shares weighted for time factor. Weighted for time factor. So illustration, the first illustration there. Assume that a company had 2 million ordinary shares outstanding as at 1st January 2007. On 31st March 2007, the company issued 800,000 new ordinary shares for cash. So you can create the one knows. Can create the one knows. So you can say you can take a screenshot of the a screenshot of the a screenshot of this because I want to do that illustration. How do you wait? Anyway, it's not even a must. I, I take a screenshot because I can explain from what is done. But this is not a a big thing which can make you not to understand. So the first thing, what you are supposed to do, you have to recognize the 2 million from the start of the year. Because the 2 million ordinary shares were outstanding from the start of the year, from the start of the year. Then there was additional shares they issued during the year, the 800. So meaning, you recognize first the 2 million up to the time they issued they issue the additional. Because from January to the time they issued the additional shares, those are how many months? Three months, because it's January, February, March. Then now from March to the end of the year, the total amount of the shares you are supposed to weigh is 2.8. 2 so what I've said is this. Eh? because I have the ad copy of this question, it was saying that assume that a company had 2 million ordinary shares outstanding as at 1st January 2007. So there was that one outstanding as at from the start of the year, the 2 million. Then what they did next is all about uh, on 31st March 2007, the company issued 800. So on 31st March, on 31st March 2007, they issued additional 800,000. Now you are told to do what? To do the one knows. So there's two options you can weigh. There's two ways you can weigh. 
So you consider these, uh, the one which were there from initial, the one which were with the shareholders from the initial period up to the time they issued the additional. So that is 2 million, 2 million. Let me mention about the time. So meaning that the first 2 million, you consider it from 1st January to 31st March. 31st March was seven. So meaning that this one you say, two million times uh, how many months? Three over 12. Then now from March to the end of the year, so the total amount was two million plus the 0 0.8. So that one will be from 31st March. So meaning that is 1st April, from 1st April to the end of the year, 31st December. Two or seven. So meaning that is 2.8 times what? Nine over 12. So I think the first one is, so two, uh, three over 12 times two million. The answer was? We were getting which figure there? By use of your calculator, what, what do you have for the first one? It's like a quarter of a two million. So that is a 500,000. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So what about the second one? 2.8 times 9 over 12? 2.1. That is 2.1. So if you add the two, that is a 2.6, huh? That is 2.6. So, or you can do this way, you can weigh this way. So another option you can use is all about uh, considering the 2 million up to the end of the year. This one, the one which was there from initial period. So you say from 1st January to 31st December, 207. So the 2 million, you consider that it was accruing for the 12 months, 12 over 12. So this one would be 2 million. Then now the additional from 31st, from 31st March to 7, to the end of the year. That is how many months? 31st March, that is like 1st April. 31st March to the end of the year, 31st. December to 7, so that when you wait for how many months? Nine, so that is 800 times nine over 12. So what do you have? 800,000 times nine over 12. So I have considered 600. The, that is 600. So meaning that that is again 2.6, 2.6. So the one which were there from initial, the one with the company issued from the initial period, from the start of the year, you consider it a cruise for the entire year. Then again, you consider the additional from that time, they issued the additional and during the end of the year. So you can either go for option one or option two when you are weighing the shares. Eh? So that's why I say, one was represent outstanding number of ordinary shares weighted for the time factor. The number of ordinary shares weighted for time factor. So another illustration we can look at, before we go to the past paper illustrations, we need to understand all of this concept of, a, all of this concept of a pause and one nose. So there's these illustrations where we say, the following are details from consolidated income statements of mind remitting for the year ended 20 June 2007. So we have the profits from ordinary activities after tax. Minority interest, they have deducted 17,500. So you get the profit attributable to members. You minus, you minus 
the prevalence dividends pay. You get the profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. Then you minus the ordinary dividends proposed. You get the retained earnings for the year. So the, anyway, that is, an, that is an illustration provided here, whereby then they said there, uh, the company had 750 million shillings, five ordinary shares outstanding throughout the accounting period. You are required to do the basic earnings per share. So it's all about powers of awareness. So already you have the powers, profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. You have the powers, eh? So you have the powers is this one. So once you have the powers, you divide with what? The one knows. The one knows you weigh the shares, eh? the ordinary shares, the common shares. So how many shares, how many shares do you have here? This is just a number of ordinary shares you have because this is not in shillings. If they could have mentioned shillings 750 million, shillings five ordinary shares. So that is when I could have divided with the five, but already we have, this is the number of ordinary shares. So that is why you see, we are saying, if basic EPS is all about powers of our nose. So we take the powers, we divide by the one nose. So they have multiplied with 12 over 12 because those shares were out, outstanding throughout the accounting period, the entire year. You weigh up as per the time factor. So that is not something I can write on the board. So you understand that. So then there's other concepts here. Like now this one, issue of new shares ranking for dividends in the period of issue for cash at full market price. So issue of new shares ranking for dividends in the period of issue for cash at full market price. So this one can be well understood when we do this illustration. So they say the issued, the issued and the fully paid share capital, the issued and the fully paid share capital of Mindrail Limited on 1st January 2007 comprised 4 million, 7% cumulative prevalent shares of shillings 10 each and the 3 million ordinary shares of shilling stand each. On 1st September 2007, a further 600,000 ordinary shares were issued and a fully paid for in cash. The profit after tax for the period was 10 million, 976,000. So calculate basic EPS, calculate the basic EPS. The one knows of a, what? The powers of our nose, sorry, the powers of our nose. So we say that uh, according to this uh, illustration, without just, uh, at least we can do something on the whiteboard. So according to this illustration, so they need, uh, they need uh, basic EPS. And you know now the formula is powers of our nose. Eh? It's all about the powers of our nose. So we say that uh, again, so the illustration there. So basic EPS is all about the powers. You divide the one nose. Eh? Powers you divide the one nose. So we get the powers. So we start from where? Reported profit for the year. Reported profit for the year. So the reported profit for the for the year. So in this question, remember that you have the reported profit for the year. Reported profit for the year is just profit after tax. And you were told that there was a profit after tax of 10 million and something there. Yeah? 10 million. So this one, the profit after tax for the period was 10 million, 976,000. So 10 million, 976,000. So we said we are supposed to deduct two components, the prevalence dividends. So that is dividends to prevalence shareholders, prevalence dividends, and we deduct what? Profit attributable to the minority shareholders, the NCI. So in this illustration, 
in this illustration, you are provided with the prevalent shares. Was there prevalent shareholders who are having prevalent shares? Yes, from the start of the year. They said they issued and fully paid share capital of Mindrail Limited on 1st January 2007, comprised 4 million 7% cumulative prevalent share of 10 each and 3 million ordinary shares of 10 each. So meaning that the previous dividends would be paid at what percentage? The previous dividends would be paid at 7%. 7%. So 7% of uh, 40 million, because the 4 million is just the number of prevalent shares. Eh? We have to take the 4 million, the number of cumulative prevalent shares times 10. That is uh, the price per share times seven percent. So what do you have? So seven percent times four million times shillings ten. So seven percent of forty million is twenty-eight. That is ninety-eight. Eh? You have ninety-eight. 98 or 28. what? 28. 28. 28 or 28? 2.8 million. 2.8, eh? uh, So 2.8, that is fine. So there, there's no profit attributable to the minority shareholders. So if you take 10,976 minus 2.8, What do you have? This one, you deduct this, uh, just a simple thing. Guys, what do you have? 8176. So that is the powers. Eh? So then we talk about now the one knows. Eh? You weigh the number of ordinary shares. You don't have to weigh the prevalent shares, but you weigh the, com the common shares. Eh? You weigh the common shares. So the one is, is all about you weigh the number of ordinary shares which were issued. Eh? The number of ordinary shares which were issued. So from the initial period, from the start of the year, January, to seven, according to this illustration, the company was uh, having or he had issued how many shares? How many ordinary shares? Three million. Three million. Eh? Then on first September two seven, a further six hundred thousand ordinary shares were issued, eh? and they fully paid for in cash. So we have to consider the three million for the entire twelve months. Then the 600 from September to the end of the year. How many months are those? September, October, November, December. Those are the four months. Eh? Yes, so those are the four months. So we say, so for the 3 million, we say 12 over 12. So it will mean to be 3 million. Then for the 600,000, we consider from September to the end of the year. So that is four months. Eh? So 600,000 times 4 over 12. 200. So that is 200. Eh? So if you add the two, you get 3.2. Eh? So then now you say basic EPS will be. So the power. So already we have it one, 76,000. You divide with the 3.2. So it would be shillings what per share? It's 176 divided 3,200. 2.6. So 2.6 per share. So shillings 2.6 per share. So with this issue of shares as part of purchase consideration of the company, that is a purchase consideration of the subsidiary company. 
So I said, who is a subsidiary? When the parent acquires another company, then he pays through shares. So how do you weigh those shares which were given out? So remember, you have entered into an agreement to purchase a subsidiary today, but you have not issued the shares today. You issue, you issue the shares later. So from what time are you supposed to weigh those shares? From what time are you supposed to do what? To weigh those shares. So the ordinary shares issued as part of purchase, as part of a cost, as part, as part of a purchase consideration, it's supposed to be as part of purchase consideration. And there's a mistake done there. Or they, are, they could have said, the ordinary shares issued as part of the cost, as part of the cost of business combination. Of business combination are included in the one nose from the date on which the acquisition was recognized, not from the time when the shares are issued. And there's someone who is unmuted making noise. Alvin, eh? mute your mic. So if you have acquired a, a subsidiary today, you would weigh those shares you issued from the time the acquisition is recognized, not, uh, not from another time. So like now here, the illustration they say, details of the issued and fully paid share capital of XYZ Limited as at 1st January 2007 was as follows. So we have the 80,000, 7% cumulative preference share of shilling 10 each. 4.2 ordinary shares of shilling 10 each. So that is just the capital of the company. On 1st August 2007, the company issued 20,000, 7% cumulative preference shares and the 600,000 ordinary shares as consideration for an 80% controlling interest in another company, which had became a subsidiary on 1st January 2007. The profit for the year ended at the 1st December 2007 was 27,320,000 for the group of which 740,000 was attributable to the minority interest in the subsidiary company that is required. So here you are required to do what? Calculate basic EPS. Calculate basic EPS. So let's look at that illustration. Concerning the issue of shares eh? as part of purchase consideration when acquiring another company. When the parent is acquiring a subsidiary, then it issues shares as part of purchase consideration. So you weigh the shares from the time the acquisition was done what? Recognized. So here we say obvious that uh, basic EPS, the basic EPS is equal to powers of our nose. Eh? So the powers of our nose. So we have to look for the powers. So according to this question, or I, again, I display so that uh, you know what we are doing, or you know which is the reported profit after tax to start with. So according to this question, there was a that reported profit for the year ended at the first December 2007 of 27 million 320,000 for the group of which 740 are, was attributable. 740 is attributable to who? Minority interest. Do we have preference uh, dividends to deduct? Yes, these preference shareholders who have the preference dividends, eh? who are supposed to receive preference dividend studies from the initial period there, you are told the details of issued and fully paid share capital of XYZ limited as at 1st January 2007 are as follows. Eh? So we have the 80,007% cumulative preference shares of shillings 10 each. So you take 
it would be 800,000 times 7 percent so that is the prevalence dividend and these others from 1st August the company issued what 20,000 7 percent cumulative prevalence share and the 600 ordinary shares as consideration of an 80 percent controlling interest in another company which had became a subsidiary on 1st January 2007. So when I would be weighing, when I would be considering anyway, when I would be considering the period, when I would be considering the period, eh? so for the 20,000 times 7%, times 7%, term I will consider from August or from January. I would consider from August or from January. I said, we do what? The ordinary shares issued as part of cost of business combination are included in the one notes from the date on which the acquisition was done what? Recognized. From the date when the acquisition was reco recognized. So meaning that is from January. Even if the shares were issued on, uh, even if the shares were issued, on August, the company became a subsidiary when? January 2007. Became a subsidiary on January 2007. So it's January. Whoever is saying August, it's January. Because the subsidiary, the company, the subsidiary came, the subsidiary of the parent January. It's only that they issued the shares on August. So we recognize the shares from January. So here we talk about the reported profit for the year. Reported profit for the year. So reported profit for the year, according to that question, is uh, 27. 27. 320. Thousand, which is inclusive what? Inclusive of amount attributable to the NCI. So we deduct that one. Because we were to, we, we were to minus obvious the profit attributable to NCI, minority shareholders, the 740,000. So 27,320,000, inclusive of what is attributable to the minority shareholders. So I'm deducting 740,000. So if you take 27,320,000 minus 740,000, what do you have? 26,580. 26,580. Then you, you will minus prevalence dividends. So we have the one to recognize from the start of the year. The one I say in the, based on the Cumulative prevalent shares of 80,000 each at 10. So say 80,000 times 10 times 7%. The period is 12 over 12. And the second one was, we say it again, we consider from January. So it was 20,000. Times the price, I consider the full market price of any prevalent shares they are issuing, they are issuing at 10 times the percentage. So this one, their contractual rate was at what percentage? It was again at 7%. So times 12 over 12. So 12. So you consider them, you recognize the dividends from the initial period eh? when the subsidiary was recognized to be the subsidiary of the parent, not from the time they issued shares. Even if the issue shares August, uh, the subsidiary came to came to exist as a subsidiary from January to seven. So what do you have? 800,000 times seven percent is fifty six thousand. So that is fifty six thousand, and the next one is fourteen thousand. So that is fourteen thousand. So if you deduct. 26,510. 26,510. 
So then we look for one nose, eh? we look for one nose. So now you weigh the ordinary shares, you weigh the number of ordinary shares. So the one which were there from the initial period, and that is from the start of the year. So you were told that uh, the common shares, that is ordinary shares, uh, the number of ordinary shares was 4.2, 4.2 ordinary shares of shillings 10 each. But remember when we are talking about one nose, we weigh the number of ordinary shares. Then again, additional issue of shares when they were acquiring the subsidiary, the number of ordinary shares there is uh, ordinary shares. Do we have the additional ordinary shares? Or they just issued preference? So we have the 600,000 ordinary shares. So we have the 600,000 ordinary shares with the issued as consideration when they were acquiring the 80% interest in another company. So we have to consider 600 and the 4.2. So both will be weighted for the 12 months. And you understand why? I've already explained. So 4.2 from January. So 12 over 12. So this one will be 4.2. And again, the 600,000, you don't have to consider it from August. You know the reason, it's from January. So the 600,000. So this one would be 4.8. Eh? So that, now you can be able to get the basic EPS. You can be able to get the basic EPS. So you say that the basic EPS is all about power of our nose. So 2610, 2610, 1000. We divide what? 4.8. So you have shillings what per share? Shillings what per share? 5.5. .5. So that is 5.5. .5, eh? So 5.5 per share. So when doing a basic EPS, when doing any question of EPS, if you start getting your earnings per share, a thousand per share, there's no company which can issue shares at a thousand per share. So you will be wrong automatically. Anyway, this is just a start. Eh? We have not entered the to more serious questions, but uh, obvious to build a topic, this is where you are supposed to start from. Then there's issue of shares without a corresponding change in resources. So today, an entity can issue shares, but what it's getting in return, it's not equivalent to the number of shares it's issued. So the issue of shares without a corresponding, uh, without a, a corresponding change in resources. On which scenario can this happen? Like now, we have the aspect of bonus issue. We have the aspect of rights issue, share split and reverse split. So starting from the bonus, what do you understand by the word bonus? What do you understand by the word bonus? What do you understand by the word bonus? So let me look at you. Uh, I mentioned names, eh? at least some people here, yeah, you have to speak. Uh, there's some Michael is saying that uh, shares issued for free. Yes, that is, that is the case. But now you have to say that, you have to say that uh, it's all about the shares issued for free to the existing shareholders, to the existing shareholders, not to everybody, to existing shareholders based on a certain proportion. So for all the shares you have, they can decide that for every five, they give you one for free. So to the existing shareholders. So shares issued for free to the existing shareholders based on a certain proportion. So you need to know how to weigh now. The main thing here now, you need to know how to weigh 
those shares. Eh? When doing the one knows. So yeah, we say that is the issue of shares for no consideration for free to the existing shareholders in the proportion of the share of their shareholdings. So the number of ordinary shares outstanding is therefore increased. The number of ordinary shares outstanding is therefore increased without an increase in resources. Our capital account increases without increase of the cash account. So for the purpose of computing EPS, the number of ordinary shares outstanding before the bonus should be adjusted for the proportional change in the number of ordinary shares outstanding as if the event has occurred at the beginning of the RS reporting period. In short, they are crude throughout the year. When you weigh, you, cons you consider them to be accruing from the areas reported period, from the time those shares were incorporated in the capital structure. So what do I mean? I mean this. Let's say the company had issued, what the company did is all about the issue of shares or the, the shareholders, the shareholders, the shareholders were having some shares of the company. So the company had issued, let's say, 5 million shares from January 2022. So these are the number of sh the shares which uh, the shareholders are holding from the start of the year. Coming to September 1st, the company decided to do what? To make a bonus to issue a bonus to say that for every five shares you have, we are deciding to give you one for free. So meaning that how many shares you will be given? So you divide five million. Eh? So five million times one divided by five, that is 100,000. Eh? So how do you determine one on this case? How do you determine one on that scenario? So when determining for the one knows, remember that uh, for the five million, you weigh them for which, how many months? It's from the start of the year, 12 over 12. So you have the five million. Then what about the bonus which was issued on September? So we have 100,000 eh? based on the proportion. How many months I will multiply with? Would I consider from September or from January? Would I consider from September or from January? Would I consider from September or from January? According to the notes I shared here. So we said that. For the purpose of computing EPS, the number of ordinary shares outstanding before bonus should be adjusted for the proportional change in the number of ordinary shares outstanding as if the event had occurred at the beginning of the earliest reporting period, meaning that we don't consider from September, but from the initial period. So the shares, we based our argument on when we were determining this number of shares they issued through bonus are those shares which the shareholders were holding from the start of the year, from the start of the year. Even if they made their bonus on September, this bonus was based on the shares which were there from January, January. So meaning that this one would be 12 over 12. And this one would be 100,000. So you get 5.1. You get your 5.1. So there's an illustration here, which is more direct. 
summarized income statement of ABC Limited for the end of 31st December 2007 is as follows. We have the profit after tax, deducts, what is going to the minority shareholders, that is NCI. Uh, we talk about preference, dividends. So this is just preference. Eh? The preference dividends, they have deducted there. We talk about ordinary dividends with the retained earnings. We add the retained earnings brought down. We have the retained earnings balance carried down. So the company had 500,000 ordinary shares on 1st January 2007 and 1.5, 7% preference shares. The company made a bonus of one for five shares on 31st March 2007, on 31st March 2007. So it's just a con the same concept I've explained here. So for you to get your house first, because they need basic EPS, eh? the first thing they need is basic EPS. So the pause is, the pause, the pause, the pause. How do you get the pause? So do, do you have the pause or we have to compute? So we have the profit after tax, then they have deducted non-controlling interest. Eh? So meaning that the profit for the year is 1.2. Profit for the year is 1.2. Because they have already deducted what was going to the minority shareholders. Eh? They have deducted what is going to the minority shareholders. So, so when you talk about basic EPS, it's equal to powers over our nose. Eh? So which is equals to what? So powers, powers that is reported, profit for the year. So which already we have, eh? after even they have deducted, what is going to the NCI is 1.2. Then what we have to deduct here is only prevalence dividends. Eh? So the prevalence dividends. So the prevalence shareholders, according to this illustration, the prevalence shareholders, we have the prevalence shareholders. Eh? So they were being given dividends at what contractual rates? At 7%. Eh? The company issued uh, 500,000 ordinary shares on 1st January 2007 and 1.5, 7% prevalence shares. Eh? So meaning that 7% uh, times 1.5. So 7% of uh, 1,500. That is 7% of 1,500. What do you have? 105. That is 105. Eh? 100 and Five. So if you deduct that one, so 1,200 minus 105. So that is 1095. So for one nose, uh, there's those uh, shares which were there from the initial period, then we weigh the others uh, through the bonus. So there was 500,000. So times 12 over 12, so that is 500. Thousand, so we can consider. Then there was those uh, they issued through bonus. Eh? Even if they said that uh, the bonus was on that first, it occurred on that first March, based on which proportion? One for every five. So one for every five. So for every five, you get one. Eh? So of which shares? The shares you have, the 500. So meaning that how many shares they issued through bonus? So 500,000 times one over five. One hundred. So that is a hundred. hundred thousand times what? Am I supposed to consider from March or from initial period, from January? So this you- from the initial period. Ah, yes, yeah, 12 over 12. So that is a hundred thousand. So that is 600,000. Eh? So remember that this one was in thousands. Eh? 
So my powers will be 10. So basic EPS is equal to what? Basic EPS will be 1095,000. If I write in full, you divide the 600,000. So that is how you get your uh, basic EPS. So it's all about when weighing the shares through bonus, you consider them from the initial period, from the time those shares which you have used to determine the bonus from the time they were incorporated in the capital structure, from the time they were incorporated in the capital structure. Ah, yeah. So restatement of EPS, restatement of EPS. So the restatement of EPS. So restated EPS is a comparative uh, computation of EPS based on the assumptions, what if the bonus issue will have taken place in the previous year. So yeah, now they are talking about the restatement of EPS on the option where you have the bonus. So it can be even a restatement when you have the rights issue. It's only that we have not talked about the rights issue. So when we do restatements, we are trying to check the profitability of the company based on two consecutive years. Eh? So we are trying to measure the profitability of an entity based on two consecutive periods. So let's say if you are in the year 2020, that is two, 2020. 2022. So let's say the bonus, like now what we have done here, this one was 207. Let me use this example. The bonus was in the year 207. So at arriving, the, at uh, our basic EPS was 1095 divided by 600. The figure is What do you have here? 1.8. It was 1.8 per share. So this one was 1.8 per share. So now I want to, co to compare with uh, the year 206. So two comparative periods. But now, remember that the bonus was in the year 207. Eh? Now I will assume what if the bonus was in the year 206. What if eh? analysis that the bonus was in the year 2006. So I would assume the bonus in, is in the year 206. Compute a new, a new one ounce because the bonus would affect one ounce and they get a new, get the, not even a new, get a, a, an EPS that is basic EPS for that previous year based on the bonus being 206. So now we are basing our argument that the bonus in, is in two consecutive period, periods. But it's only that we, have, we are saying what if now it, it was in 206. Remember that in 207, we were having 1.8. So now we compute again the bonus being in the previous year, the 206. Then we compare the EPS, what we have for two consecutive periods, and we make a decision. We comment about the profitability of that company. Did it increase? Did it reduce? Did it increase or did it reduce? So that is what you see here in these notes. They are saying that uh, restated EPS is comparative computation of EPS based on the assumptions of what if the bonus issue, what if the bonus issue could have taken place in the previous year. So illustration, assuming that the earnings of 206 after deduction of preference dividends were 1 million and 5,000. And the ordinary shares outstanding throughout the period were 400,000. So required, compute the restated EPS, 
taking into account the effect of the bonus issue. So meaning that now we have to assume that bonus which was in the year 2007 is in the year 2006. So we compute a new EPS for 206, or we compute an EPS for 206, incorporating the aspect of bonus based on the same proportion. Then we check on those uh, EPSs and we comment about the profitability. So already we have the house, eh? because they have said, assuming that the earnings of 206 after deducting prevalence dividends. Because we know that to get the powers is all about profit for the year minus prevalent dividends, and you deduct what is going to the the profit which is going to the minority shareholders. Huh? On this case, we don't have what is going to the minority shareholders. So it's only that they have said they have already deducted the prevalent dividends, and we have one million and five thousand. So what we have to look for is now the one us, but we have to incorporate the aspect of the bonus which occurred in the year 2007. So, how many shares which were outstanding throughout the year? 400,000. So, that is what they have done here. This is just an explanation. So, that is what they have done here in the determination of one us. So, they have considered first the 400 for the entire 12 months, then again, the bonus the bonus using the same proportion. Eh? And you know, obviously it would accrue for the entire 12 months. You know the reason why. Uh -huh. You know the reason that is. So 400,000 plus 80,000, you get 480. You divide 1 million 500, that is 5,000 divided by the 480,000, 2.09 per share. So what can you comment about the performance of the entity? What can you comment about the performance of that entity? So here we were having 1.8 and there we have 2.9. So that is after you have 1,005,000 being your powers. Then in the determination of one was, our shares was 400,000. So this one was outstanding for 12 months. You get the 400,000. Then you assume that the bonus is in this year to a six. You say 400 times one over five. We get what? 20. We are getting which figure? 400 divided by five is 80. Eight. So you get 80,000. So 12 over 12. So 80,000. You get 480,000. You say powers divided by one nose to get your basic EPS. So we're getting shillings 2.09 eh, per share. So after considering now the EPS of the two consecutive periods, remember that this one is for 206. And for 207 is 1.8. So meaning that uh, the profitability, the performance of the company slightly declined in the current year 207 from 2.09 per share to 1.8 per share. So you can say the performance of the company slightly declined in the current year. That is from 2.09 of 206 compared to the current year of 1.8 per share. So it's all about, when you do this uh, restatement, you are trying to compare the profitability of two consecutive years using the earnings per share. Then now there's this major thing here now here, right issue. Even without displaying this one, it's a definition. Give me the definition of that. What's a right issue? What's a right issue? Right issue, nini. Ni. Uh 
a trial. Hmm? What is a rights issue? So it's These all about. Dishes. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Maureen. It's Maureen, or who? These are shares issued to uh, existing shareholders uh, in a certain percentage at a reduced price. The so price that is lower than the existing market price. Yeah, so it's all about shares issued to the existing shareholders. So existing shareholders are given that option to purchase shares Yes, based on a certain proportion, but the price will be lower than the existing market price. The price will be lower than the existing market price. So it's all about the issue of shares to the existing shareholders based on a certain proportion, but at a price which is lower than the existing market price. That is what we call the rights issue. So how do you compute for it? Now, how do you consider the shares issued through rights issue? How do you weigh them? That is now the main thing you need to know. So in a rights issue, the exercise price of the issued shares is less than the fair value of the shares. That is what we have said. So therefore, the price at which the shares are issued, the price at which the shares are issued, reflects a bonus element. In a rights issue, the one knows should be included in the basic earnings per share after taking into consideration the theoretical x rights price. After taking into consideration the theoretical x rights price. So this is what you do in short, eh? without uh, a lot of confusion here and there. So when you have the aspect of a rights issue, this is how you do your one-offs. Because it's all about shares, it affects one-offs. Because it's all about shares which are done what? Issued to the existing shareholders on a certain proportion at a lower price than the existing market price. So when doing your one-offs, you use this formula. So you say ordinary shares, ordinary shares before rights issue. Times the fair value before rights issue. So this one you divide with the TERP. Theoretical X rights price. Times period before rights issue. Times the period before rights issue plus ordinary shares after the rights issue times the period times the period after the rights issue. So we have said that when there's an aspect of rights issue, when there's an aspect of rights issue, so the one knows, you are one knows, you say ordinary shares before rights issue, times the, the, times the fair value before rights issue, you divide the theoretical x rights price, multiply period before rights issue, add ordinary shares after rights issue, times the period after the rights 
issue. So it's all about ordinary shares before rights issue, period before rights issue. Ordinary shares after, period after rights issue. It's only that under the before, we have to introduce the fair value before rights issue. So theoretical X rights price, there's a formula which is supposed to be used in the determination of this, but I don't use that formula. I will do it there in a direct manner. On my case, I don't rely on that formula. I will show you now you are supposed to do the theoretical X rights price in a shorter way. Even I saw that, uh, I saw in the Kastner uh, marking scheme, they are embracing that way, uh, which I use in the determination of this, other than using this formula, which is here. There's this formula, which is very big, the theoretical. They say ordinary shares before rights issue terms, fair value before rights issue class. So avoid that. What you need to know is just what I've written on the whiteboard. Then I will show you later how you are supposed to determine the theoretical x right price in a direct manner. So let's do this illustration, then you will understand how you do that theoretical x right price in a direct way. So they said the issued and fully paid shares, the, the issued and fully paid share capital of ABC Limited on 1st January 2007 comprised 100,000, 7% preference shares of 10 each. 4 million ordinary shares of shillings 10 each. On 1st October 2007, the company decided a one for four rights issue of ordinary shares at shillings 14 per share. The market price of ordinary shares on the last day of the quotation on a camera basis was at what price? 24 point, that is 24 shillings per share. The first thing they require the student to do is the computation of the EPS figure for the end of the first December 2007, assuming that the profit after tax for the year is 11.55400. Number B, compute the restricted EPS figure given the previous year's earnings per share was 0 0.28. So let's do this, let's do this. So we always say that I will say that uh, basic EPS is equals to powers you divide with one ounce. You divide with one ounce. So what about the powers? So reported profit for the year. That is the profit after tax. So according to this illustration, according to the illustration, they said that in the requirement, compute the basic EPS for the year, 31st December 2007, assuming that the profit after tax was 11, 55, 400. So this is the profit after tax. So we raise what? Preference dividends and the Profit attributable to the NCI. So the prevalence dividends so they will be based on a contractual rate at the value at which those shares were stated. So they were stated at what value? So you are told, remember that the 1155 400 is the profit after tax, this one from the requirement number one. Then we have 100,000, 7% preference shares of 10 each. So meaning that that is a 1 million, 7% of 1 million is? 7% of 1 million, those are 100,000 times 10. 
Remember that uh, dividends is paid on the value, not the number of ordinary shares. Is that 70,000? Is that 70,000? Yes. So 70,000. Eh? So you deduct from 11,500. What do you have? 10,800. So that is 10,800. Then we talk about one eh? We talk about one ounce. So already you know that the formula, ordinary shares before rights issue times the fair value before rights issue. You divide the theoretical X rights price times the period before rights issue plus ordinary shares after the rights issue times the period after the rights issue. So my one ounce will be, so ordinary shares before rights issue. Ordinary shares before rights issue. You know that uh, the financial year was starting when, in some questions you can even do analysis eh, of the dates and the shares you have as per those dates. Because here we have January 2007. Then after that, they issued the rights issue on October 2007. October 2007, based on which proportion? One, four. Four. So the, the shares which were there were outstanding, which were with the shareholders from initial period is 4 million. Eh? In some questions, I would be saying dates, details, shares. Eh? So I say like now this one is from January 2007. We have how many shares? 4 million. Not a share. So this is a date. So the details is balance brought down. So the shares is 4 million. Eh? So the first October 2007, right issue. So in which proportion? One for four, based on the shares they have. So meaning that here it's one million. So when you come to your formula now, it's easier. Ordinary shares before right issue is four million. You say four million times the fair value. Fair value is obviously higher than the value at which they made the right issue. Right issue price and the fair value. So the fair value is obviously higher than the right issue price. So there is that price they say it was around 20 what? 24. That is what they said from this question. Eh? On 1st October 2007, the company decided a one for four rights issue of ordinary shares at 14. Eh? So the rights issue was at 14. The market price of the ordinary shares on the last day of the quotation was 24. So the market price, the fair value is 24. So you multiply with 24. So theoretically, we have to look for it. So period before rights issue from January to end of September, nine, eh? 10 plus what? Ordinary shares after rights issue, that is 5 million. Eh? Because it's the one which is before plus the one through the right issue times three over 12. So what you need to know how to compute is now the theoretical x right price. The theoretical x right price. So we use the proportion. It was one for four. One for four. So we say, remember that the four which were existing, the four old, and the one is the new. They will be given one new for every four old. So the one new will be given at a lower price, which is at 14. But the one which were existing, will be going at the market price, which is 24. So four times 24, and one times 14, this is 14. One times 20, that is four times 24 is? And 96. 96. So 96 plus 14.
So this is 110. And this one you add. If you have four, you are given one new, you get five. So 110 divided by five. 110 divided by five? 22. 22. Yes, that is how you get your theoretic it's right price. So give me the answers for this and this. You can add them. Or you just do once. Because this is just a continuation. So you get an answer there. So yeah, we have the 45, 22, 7, 27. So meaning that our... Our basic EPS will be so powers of our nose, so 1085, 400. You divide with what? 45, 22, 727. So you have shillings what per share? Divide, divide. Okay. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 4, 4. Yes. 0 0.24 per share. So the next thing he was asking is all about this question they were asking, compute the restated EPS figure given that the previous year earnings, the previous year earnings per share is 0 0.28, 0 0.28, the previous year's earnings. So when we are doing restated EPS, so they need restated EPS, eh? given the previous year's earnings is 0 0.28. So when we are talking about the restricted EPS and you have the aspect of right issue. So we assume now, remember that uh, this was 207. Now we are assuming that the right issue was in 2006. So we compute the basic earnings per share of 206, incorporating the aspect of right issue. Then we compare with our earnings per share for 207. Then we comment about the profitability of the company based on the two consecutive years. So how do you compute the restricted EPS uh, when there's the aspect of right issue? So you talk about the previous year's earnings, previous year's earnings. You multiply with the theoretical right price over the fair value before right issue. So in short, what you do uh, in the formula, you do this the reciprocal. This one is done. So you do the reciprocal of this. So it's all about the previous year's earnings of 0 0.28 times the reciprocal of this. Eh? So 22 and 24. So what do you have? Because already you were given the earnings of the previous year was 0 0.28. Eh? Theoretical price Point. with 22 and this is 24. That is? 0. 0.26. 0. 0.26 or 0. 0.26. So that is shillings 0.26 per share. So this is for the previous year. This is for the previous year. And this one is for the current year. So you can see the EPS for the current year did what? Decreased. Eh? So you can say the profitability of the entity decreased in the current year, slightly decreased in the current year compared to the previous year. That is from 0 0.26 per share to 0 0.24 in the current year. That is how you incorporate the aspect of right issue when computing this aspect of basic earnings per share. So when we talk about share split and reverse split, so this one will be, 
based on the illustrations to be done. So share spirit and reverse spirit. So why do we carry out a share spirit? So a share spirit involves reduction of the power value of ordinary shares in order to make them affordable. Reduction of the power value. So the reverse spirit is all about the consolidation of the power value. The main objective of a reverse spirit is to avoid the dilution effect. So remember that for the share spirit, you are making the shares affordable so that you attract more investors. But when you are doing the reverse spirit, you are doing the reverse spirit, you are now making the shares to be more expensive. So you are trying to protect the shares from becoming valueless. So that is what they say, dilution. That, that is what they mean when they say, to avoid what? To avoid the dilution effect. So both the share split and reverse split should be weighted for time factor from the earliest reported period from the date such shares were incorporated in the capital structure. I will come to address this when I will be doing a 20 mark situation. So now we can go to the past paper and do two illustrations and we we'll call it a session for today. So starting from this question of 2016, November, then I do 2019. So at least from there, I will be sure that you have understood the aspect of basic EPS. It's very easy, basic. Mari, itakuwa ngumu kidogo ni pale kwa diluted. But uh, with a lot of concentration and with what we do here and what you are required to do, I always say that it cannot be difficult at all for the students I teach. So. November 2016, question four. They were saying that the four information, information rates to Chamber remitted. So we have the net profit after tax for 2013, 2014, 2015. Number two, on 1st February 2014, a right issue of one new share for each five shares outstanding was made at an exercise price of shillings five. Number three, before the rights issue, the number of shares outstanding was 5 million. Was 5 me? million. The last day to exercise the rights was on 1st March 2014. The fair value of one ordinary shares immediately before exercise of the rights on 1st March 2014 was 11. So they need earnings per share. This is even more direct because what I can see here, you have the profit after tax. When determining the powers, because now they need the basic earnings per share, which is powers of our nose. When determining the powers, eh? see, we just take the profit after tax, we deduct what is uh, attributable to the prevalence shareholders, that is prevalence dividends, and we minus profit attributable to minority shareholders. We don't have the two. We don't have prevalence shareholders here. We don't have the profit attributable to minority shareholders. Meaning our powers is given there. For 2013 is 30, 2014 is 98, 2015 is 45. Those are the powers. So what I have to compute is the one knows. Whereby we consider the ordinary shares. Eh? So the main thing you need to check in that question the, when did the right issue took place? Because I can see there is a rights issue. On 1st February 2014, the rights issue, that is when it took place, according to note two, meaning that in 2013, there was no rights issue. Meaning that in 2013, there was no rights issue. So that one shows that in 2013, I have to weigh shares there. And that is why they have said note three, before the rights issue, before the rights issue, it means it's 2013, because the rights issue took place in 2014. So before the rights issue, the number of outstanding, the number of shares outstanding was 5 million. So, and that one takes me to the whiteboard. That one takes me to the whiteboard there. Eh? Why well, you would say, so for 2013, so really we have the, we know that uh, pause is what? 
part here. So, and they have said that uh, before the rights issue, which is this 2013, the number of outstanding, so remember that this one is in millions, eh? the number of outstanding ordinary shares is 5 million. Eh? So this one, even if you wait 12 over 12, because they were outstanding for the entire period, you remain with 5 million. Eh? So I can say basic EPS 2013 will be 30 divided by 5. So that is shillings, 6 per share. 2014 is when the right issue took place. That is 2014. So meaning that I have to get the one nose because the powers, I know it. The period before rights issue, so ordinary shares before rights issue is 5 million times the fair value, times the fair value before rights issue. So the fair value would be higher. So they were saying that, uh, note five, the fair value the fair value of one ordinary shares immediately before exercise of the rights on 1st March 2014 was 11. But the price at which they were exercising the rights is at what price? So, Chakri, and avoid writing my whiteboard. You are writing, you are writing, you are commenting on the, on the screen. Avoid, avoid that. So, on 1st February 2014, a right issue of one new share for each five shares outstanding was made at an excess price of five. So the, the price at which they were to buy the shares through the rights issue is five, but the fair value according to note five is 11. The proportion you know is one for five, eh? that is according to note two. So meaning that the fair value is 11 times the period before the rights issue. So the rights issue took place when? February 1st. Eh? So meaning that the period before rights issue is just January. That is one over 12. It's just January. Then you multiply with what? Period after the rights issue. The period after the rights issue. Not the period, ordinary shares of the rights issue than the period before rights issue. Period before rights issue is 11 over 12. The ordinary shares, but the five plus uh, the one through rights issue, it was one for every five times the five million. So this one would be six, eh? so six. So the theoretical x rights price, TRB, how do you determine based on the proportions? So we said we use the proportion. We say it was one for five. So one new. So five old. Eh? So one new at what price? It's five. The price of the rights issue. Five old at the market price, 11. So this is five. This is 55. So if you add this and this, six, 60. 60 divided by six. That is 10. Eh? So this one was 10. So if you use your calculator, what do you have? As our one knows. What do you have from your end? 5.9583. 5 point? 9583. 5.9. 5.8. Let's say 5.96. Uh, 5 eh? Is that the case? In two decimal places, eh? 
So meaning that basic EPS will be the pause for 2014 was the profit after tax we were given direct from the question because there was no prevalent dividends to deduct and there was no profit attributable to ordinary shares. So it was 38. So 38 divided by 5.96. What do you have, Shirins? Then we do the last year, 2015, which will be direct. So this one is 30 divided by 5.96. 6.4. So this is 6.4 per share. Then for 2015, remember that our powers, we have it already. So the profit after tax, the 45. Eh? So we take the 45 divided by what? So, so far by 2015, which are the outstanding number of ordinary shares with the ordinary shareholders? So initially it was 5 million. Then in 2014, it increased, it increased it to 6 because there was an additional 1 million which was through what? The right issue. So there was five plus the one. So that's why we have the six. So meaning that six million divide times six, times 12 over 12, it just means to be six. Even if you wait the six million throughout the year, six million times 12 over 12, it's six million. 45 divided by six, that is 7.5. Eh? Mm -hmm. Uh, shilling 7.5 per share. So that is how you were supposed to do the basic uh, basic EPS for this question. Eh? Yes, so the next illustration is November 2019, question five. These are the same things I told the sitting students of which it was very nice. 90% of those students passed. Um, maybe whoever who failed in the previous sitting, make sure that you excel in this sitting. FR is not difficult at all. It's, on, it's all about, you need to get those small, small techniques of doing questions in the required time. Never waste your time in an exam doing a question for two hours. Then there's other questions which can be done within 20 minutes. You get your 10, 10 marks, 20, and you look for other 20 from the bigger questions. So they were saying that the Kika Limited has prepared its consolidated financial statements for the year to target September 2019. Extract of which are shown below. Also provided below are the extracts of the consolidated financial statements for the year to 30 September 2018. So you have two years, eh? 30 September 2018, 2019. So you have the profit before interest and tax, finance costs, tax charge, ordinary dividends paid, preference dividends paid. Profit attributable to non controlling interest. You have also obtained the following information in respect of the company's share capital. Ordinary share capital as at 1st October 2017 was 15 million, made up of shares of five per value. The Giga issued some 500,000 ordinary shares at full market value on 1st January 2018. The Giga also made a rights issue of two new ordinary shares of, that is a for, they have said the Kika Limited also made a rights issue of two new ordinary shares for every 10 ordinary shares held as at first April 2019. The right, the right, the right price per share was 42.5, market value per share. As at the same date, 
was 48. Dakika also had 1 million, 6%. Shillings 10 provided non redeemable prevalent shares as at 1st October 2018. The examiner needs you to do just basic EPS for the two years. Eh? Target September 2018, and that is September 2019. Eh? So for the two consecutive periods. Eh? So this question was uh, 2019, November. So I have shared the add copy to your WhatsApp and I expect you have it. Because we have to do it in the next 10 minutes. We end the session. So you are required to do the basic EPS. So which is all about powers of our nose. So we can look for the powers for the two years consecutive based on the information given. So we have 2019, 2018. Eh? So remember that we always start from the reported profit for the year, which is a profit after tax. But here you are given profit before interest and tax. That one means we have to deduct the interest and we have to deduct the tax. Eh? We have to deduct the interest and the tax. So we have the profit before interest and tax. 88, 30, and this one was 70, 12. So we have to deduct the interest, which is finance cost. 1045, we have 987. Tax, we have tax charge. So the tax charge is 1718, 1264. So at that point, we have the reported, reported profit for the year. Then we deduct what? Preference dividends paid. Eh? So the preference dividends paid, and we raise profit attributable to NCI. So prevalence dividends paid, that is 60 and 60 here. And the profit attributed to NCI, we have 180. And we have 160. All right. Give me the answers very fast. So 88, 30, minus 10, 45, minus 17, 18. So this is 60, 67, minus 60, minus 180, 58, 27. So 70, 12, minus 987. Minus 12, 64. That is for 7, 61. Eh? Minus 60 minus 160. So that is 45, 41. Eh? You are paused for the two years. Eh? So remember that we have two years, 2018, 2019. So this one is ending 30 September 2018. So it starts on 1st, October 2017. So when was the right issue? Was it in 2018 or 2019? So according to note uh, four, note three, the Giga Limited also made a, a rights issue of two new 
ordinary shares for every 10 ordinary shares held, 1st April 2019. So meaning that in 2018, there was no rights issue. What am I supposed to do? Just weigh shares. I will just weigh the shares. So I will say date, details, date details, shares. Eh? So I will weigh direct here. I get the one ounce. I get the one, one ounce. So our financial year starts when? We have seen that our financial year starts on our financial year starts on first October twenty seventeen. So the first October twenty seventeen. So that is a the balance brought down. How many shares were outstanding as at that period? From the initial period, from the start of the year? 15 million. 15 million. So this is in shillings. Eh? Each was owing at what, at what price? Each was owing at five. Eh? Each was owing at five. So meaning that the shares, the number of shares, that is 3,000 eh? in thousands. 3,000. So 15,000 divided by five per share. We get the three. So you wait from the start of the year. See, our financial starts on October. So October to the end of the year, 12 over 12. So that is three. Was there additional shares during that period? So we have said balance go down. So 3,000, so 15 divided by five. Then this one is from the start of the year. So up to the end of the year. So 12 over 12. So 3,000 times 12 over 12, you get the three. So was there additional shares they issued during that period? So note two, Dakika issued 500 ordinary shares at full market price on 1st January 2018. So 1st so January 2018. So we have new issue. So they issued 500. So from January to the end of the year, those are nine months, nine over 12. So 500 times nine over 12, Three seventy-five. Ah, uh, three seventy-five. So three thousand plus three seventy-five. That is thirty-three seventy-five. Because note four, the next additional information was concerning rights issue, and that one was in twenty nineteen. Eh? So meaning that here for twenty eighteen, the basic EPS will be, and uh, that is forty-five point one. You divide with thirty-three seventy-five. So shillings what? One point three five per share. So I think we can do the twenty nineteen. You know that our twenty nineteen now was ending, was ending, our 2019, September 2019, so starting 2018. The right issue card when? April. When did the right issue occur? In note, in note three, it was first April 2019, eh? on the proportion of two new shares for every 10. Two new for every 10, so first April 2019. They made a, a right issue. Two new for every 10 held. For every 10 held. So, meaning that for us to get our 
one ohms. So we have to use the formula. We have to use the formula. So I will clear this one. I think you are done. So here, so the one ohms will be. So we have to use the shares. So anyway, I can do analysis of shares so that it can be easier. Analysis of shares. So dates, details, shares. So now here we need the shares to apply in the formula. That is how we determine our one ohms when there's the aspect of the rights issue. We don't have to weigh direct, but we have to use the formula. So our financial starts on first. Yeah, that is first October 2018. So the balance brought down the shares from the previous year. The 3,000 plus the 500. So we have 3.5. Eh? The one from the previous period. Eh? The one from the previous year. Then on now, on April 2019, they made what? Right, issue. In which proportion? Two for every 10 held. So that is two over 10 times 3.5. So two divided by 10 times two, 3.5, that is 700. Eh? Then now our one was will be Ordinary shares before right issue, three, five, times the fair value. The fair value was, according to the question, according to the question, the fair value was, so number three, remember that the rights, the rights price per share was 42.5. The market value per share was 48. So the fair value is 48. So the theoretical will determine period before right issue from October to April. How many months are those? October, November, December, January, February, March, six. Eh? Plus ordinary shares after the right issue. 3.5 plus the seven, you get the 42. Eh? Times the period after, that is six over 12. So, what about the theoretical exchange price? So the theoretical, the TRP, the proportion was two new and the 10 old. So two new at what price? The price, the price of the right issue. The price of the right issue was the one which is lower than the market price. According to that note, three, 42.5. Eh? And this one is 48. So for 80 here, 42.5 times two, 85. So 85 plus 480, this is 565. Eh? And this is 12. Eh? 565 divided by 12. So this is 47. So that is what you put here. So give me the answer for the one who's there. Seventeen eighty seven plus So that is? The entire answer is that eight eighty seven. Thirty eight eighty seven point two three. So that is thirty eight eighty seven. So divide fifty eight fifty eight. So take fifty eight. This one fifty eight. So basic EPS would be fifty eight twenty seven divided by thirty eight eighty seven. 
What is your answer? So it will be shillings what per share? 1.72. It's one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Is everybody 1.5. Ah, 1.5 per share. So that is the end of that question. There's no way we could have used the note for the non-redeemable prevalent shares. They were not applicable anywhere for that question. So this marks the end of this uh, introduction part of uh, IS 33 on how you are supposed to do basic earnings per share. So when we meet uh, next time, I will be doing again questions based on basic earnings per share and diluted earnings per share. Because for you to do diluted earnings per share, you have to do basic. That is the first step. For you to do diluted, you have to do basic earnings per share. Then I will mention the other process to be followed. So thank you for your time and continue with your normal revision. Have a good night.